welcome to this painting tutorial for orcs. Orcs are being re-released so uh, I thought this would be good timing to get this painting tutorial uh, up and running. So I'm just going to be painting an orc boy today uh, but this colour scheme you will be able to use for your whole orc force. I'll be using the same colours throughout. How I paint this orc boy will be how I paint all the other orc units and all the orc vehicles uh, as well. So uh, stay tuned for this painting tutorial. Orcs is a big race, a popular one, and uh, no doubt they're going to be a lot more popular when these new releases come out. So uh, inspiration for this one has just come from the artwork of the old Orc Codex. Um, well, it's the current one, but it's going to be replaced very soon. Uh, and also the artworks on the front of the uh, Orc Battle Force. Um, so that's the colour scheme I've chosen. Uh, so you've got the, the green of the skin and then I like the colours white, black and red. Red nice and aggressive for orcs and then black for sort of a menacing kind of colour. And I like doing checkered patterns. Um, so that's the colour scheme that I settled on. Almost went for the yellow, like the Evil Suns uh, is a nice colour scheme as well. Blue looks really nice with orcs. Um, so that's a good thing if you're collecting orcs, uh, you do any colours that you want. Um, and usually it always looks good, but I've just gone for a sort of a classic orc style. I want to echo that scheme in my army, so I'm going to be showing you elements of how to paint all these different colours um, in this orc painting tutorial. So we're going to run through the colours that you need uh, to paint one of these orc boys. So uh, just basic colours to start off with, ceramite white. And then you're uh, about on black. Uh, if you look at the old names, just go on Google, type in uh, Citadel Paints Conversion Chart, and it will tell you the old colour, the new colour. Uh, I'm just going to give you the colours that I currently have. So ceramite white, about on black, just your standard black and white paints. And then uh, you'll want the old uh, bleached bone. I think it's called a Shabbati bone now. And then you want a flash gets yellow. And then uh, Bestial Brown as well. White, two reds, Wazdak are red. And then sort of more of an orangey red, Blood Red, the old Blood Red there. And then uh, the old Goblin Green. It's a very old paint that I've got there, but the old Goblin Green. It's going to be difficult. Orc Flesh, I think, is hard to paint, it's hard to master. Um, but hopefully, I'm going to show you a technique that works. If you like the way of that, uh, that orcs come out, then uh, I'll show you how to achieve that uh, level for painting orc flesh. Difficult because the tones are diff uh, different for orcs. Um, people paint them in different ways, uh, but that's the sort of colour that I've uh, done for mine. And for metallic smith or silver. And then uh, the old hash up copper. Now, you won't see hash up copper in this particular one that I'm painting. I'm going to be painting this orc boy here. Uh, I use the hash up copper if there's any uh, bullet cartridge cases. I'll show you on one that's already been painted. See on here, uh, the tip of the bullets I paint in this uh, bolt gun metal, uh, but then the cartridge casing uh, I paint using the hash up copper. Paint it straight with this colour uh, and then shade it. Uh, with the Aphonian camo shade and then I mix this with some mithril silver and then just do a highlight ring over the top so whenever there's uh, cartridge casings that's what I do. There isn't one in this miniature so I'm just telling you the heads up on this one so you know how to do it if you come across it in any of the miniatures that you're painting. Uh, so that's the hash up copper, I'll mention that one and then uh, iron breaker which is the old chain mail and then two washes Actually, there's three. Just for doing this orc flesh, you've got Agrax Earthshade, Seraphim Serpia, and then a shade that I haven't used before in any of the painting tutorials, and that's Aphonian Camo Shade. And the reason is that that is like a brown green shade, uh, which is handy colour for painting the orc flesh. So you'll see how we use that one in this tutorial. But those are the paints 
Uh, just a general spread, not uh, too many, not too bad. Uh, and as I said, all the techniques I show you on here, uh, the way I show you to paint the armour is the way you can apply that to all of the Orc vehicles, killer cans and, and so on. So this is just a mini version of the Orc army. Take all the techniques here and then apply them to whatever units uh, that you're painting. So those are the paints that you need and uh, we're going to make a start now in uh, painting this Orc boy. Right, so uh, preparation and the miniature's been uh, cut out, glued together, cleaned up and glued on its base and then the actual base itself uh, is just PVA glue and then uh, sand mixed with some small stones um, and you can add bits of uh, spare bits from your sprues and so on to that and then uh, I'm a big believer in saving time by using spray paint. So for this one to save time uh, I've used two sprays here. I've used the uh, stealth, the uh, Montana Gold, and it's called Stealth. The code is 7070. Sometimes they change the name, um, but it's called Stealth. Uh, 7070 is the code. It's Montana Gold Spray Paint Range. Uh, people have been asking where can you get these from. You can get them on eBay, and uh, you can just Google search Montana Gold. Um, and also the name of the paint that comes up. There's different companies, and often you'll find it's from companies that specialise in uh, graffiti artists, ones that supply graffiti artists with their paints, because they graffiti artists uh, use uh, this paint here. And also for spraying, when you're using the Montana Gold, uh, you have to shake the can really well. Remember to do that, and then spray it on a sp spare piece of card. Just so, keep doing it until the proper paint starts to come free. You need to spray it for about five seconds and you get the chemicals and stuff come out and then the actual pigment itself starts to flow out. Another tip as well um, is don't spray too far away from the model. If you spray too far away then uh, the paint starts to dry as it flies through the air and then it starts to give a, uh, a rough texture. So you put a bit of practice, practice on a bit of card first, uh, short bursts, and then uh, not too far away, and then uh, you'll get that consistency just right. So that's the base done. Um, and then for the brown, really nice color, and that's uh, Army Painter Spray that I've used, and the color is Leather Brown. Uh, nice cans that Army Painter do. Excellent colour for starting us off. You'll see how much time is saved uh, just by spraying that brown. It's an excellent starting base colour uh, for this miniature. Uh, save yourself a whole load of time and you'll see as we go on. Because your orcs, you're painting lots of orc boys perhaps. Orcs is a big army. You want to plough through your stuff nice and quick. I sprayed the base first with the grey. Then once that are completely dried, I then covered up the base, it has to be completely dry, covered it with tissue, wrapped it around the feet and then sprayed uh, the rest of the miniature with the brown. So that's the way you can do it or you can do the basing, cut the miniature off, spray both bits separately and then glue them back together again. Either way, um, there is some ground the boots here but that doesn't matter because I'll be covering that with black. You just want to keep the grey off of the um, clothing part of the miniature. So that's the preparation done, and we're going to go straight into the first stage of the miniature now. Right, so we're on the basing here. Uh, it's a colour that I haven't mentioned, and that's Codex Grey. Um, just a mid-grey shade is what you need to start off here. So we've got the Codex Grey, and uh, we're just looking to get this basing done. So I've got a uh, base coat brush here. And I've just picked up some paint in the brush, and not too much. And then I'm basically just running the brush over the top of the stones here. I'm just working it in and being careful not to get any paint on the rim because that grey is what I'm gonna is the colour I'm gonna keep, so I just want to keep that nice and clean. And then I'm just working the paint over that stonework up to the edge. If I make a mistake, I can wet my finger 
and then rub it off the base there. Uh, but that's fine, that's going on nice. And then I scrub the brush out there and then go straight in with the white. Some white on the brush, take some out onto the tissue there. And then a final highlight of the white. And the spray in the base grey has given you your dark grey starting point. And then and now you're just building up with two highlights. And uh, that is nice and fast. That's that done. So that's the base highlighting done. Right, so then uh, onto the finishing the basing here. I'm just taking some Seraphim Serpia wash and uh, I'm just going to flow that in uh, around the feet and just blotch it onto different areas of the base. And that adds just a nice brown shading um, to the miniature. It's just so it's not a flat grey, there's actually some depth to it and it's got more of a natural look. So just flow that in, just flood it in around the feet, just sets the miniature on nicely onto the base there. That looks nice. So that's that done. That's your basin done. When that dries, that's all you've got to do. And we just add the flock on um, at the very end. So that's the basin finish. Nice and quick, uh, but a nice effective technique. Okay, so we're on to uh, the green now. It's the first colour that I'm going to do on here. Uh, so the colour that I start off with is Goblin Green. And we just take some of the paint again. I'm now using a standard brush. It's quite a large brush. And I'm just looking to fill in the skin. So wherever there is the orc skin, uh, it gets a coat of that colour. So you can see there, I'm just... I'd say be neat on this one. You don't want to get it on the brown um, sort of uh, clothing because well you'll see a bit why a bit later we don't want to touch that because really we are going to leave it as it is that brown spray paint will save you a whole heap of time so you're uh, just being as neat as you can you don't want to get it on any of the brown cloth so I'm just basically running the paint around and you'll notice how nicely it goes onto the miniature. Uh, that brown is a lovely starting colour for your green. It's better than the grey, it's better than black, and it's better than white. So that's a nice starting colour for the green, perfect colour. So maybe we'll just do one coat. And uh, if I miss an area, then it's just brown as opposed to uh, some other colour that would be more noticeable. So you're just running that green all over. Wherever there's flesh, orc skin, then you're wanting to uh, put that on. And just one coat will do it at this stage. Right, so that's the, uh, the green done, just the face and uh, the arms there, just in the orc flesh. That's looking good. Next colour I do is the iron break, which is the old chain mount. Uh, there's a bit of work to do on here, but wherever there is that metal, then you're just going to give it a coat. And again, just one coat will do it, because the brown is a nice starting base colour. I want to be neat here, because this shaft, I'm going to, on the axe here, I'm going to keep brown. I'm just going to shade it with the inks, and then I'm just going to leave it. And that will save loads of time. I found out that painting these orcs, you need to have a good technique, otherwise you're going to spend ages and ages painting uh, these green skins, so uh, just controlling the brush strokes there on the uh, the blade of the the axe there, and just nice and neat because I could show you a masterclass for painting orcs, but is that practical if you're trying to paint an army? So I'm going to try and show you a technique that gets you nice results, but at the same time uh, isn't going to take you too long. So that's coming along well. And then again, I'm just doing the strokes sort of in that direction. 
there. If a little bit of brown shows through, it doesn't really matter because it's rusty metal uh, that we're doing here. Right, it says plate on the back of the orc there. Uh, I'm probably going to do that black, but I want it to be uh, to look a metallic disc. So what I do is just I paint the, the rim or the edge of that disc all the way around. And you need to be neat here because I don't want to get it on the on the um, cloth. That brown cloth is the area you need to protect. It doesn't matter if I get it all over the disc at the back because I'm going to paint black over the top of that. And underneath there's a little buckle. Um, I'm not going to bother painting that with the silver. I'll do that as a neat part later on. Uh, then at the front of the boots on this orc, that, oh, there's a whole part of the metal there and there. And then the whole of the gun I do in the metal. So that's looking good. So that's just gone on there fine. Let me make sure you get the back of the gun. Uh, the handle of the, the grip of the gun, make sure that's done. Even if you're going to paint a colour over the top on some of the panels on the on the gun, I'd still do the whole thing silver quickly and then uh, it's easy to paint over your primary colour. Just being careful not to cover that cloth bit there. Looks like that's done. This shoulder pad this part here will end up silver and I'm going to paint that jaw shape and the rim, the edge as well being quick here then on his chest there's a couple of plates there's one there a bit of extra armories he's added onto his chest so I'm just doing those in the silver as well chainmail colour and he's got a buckle on his belt as well, so I'm just going to cover that over. If later on I decide to make one of these red or whatever, then I can go over the top of it. No problem at all. So I think that's all the silver done. Right, next colour you can do is the, the uh, creamy colour, or the um, uh, bleach bone, or ashabati bone as it's called now. Uh, and for this orc, I'm going to do the teeth. I'm just picking out the teeth here. Yeah. Just in the mouth. Just filling that in with the cream. Working the brush in. If you fill in the gaps, it doesn't matter too much. Just wanting to get that bone in there. That looks good, and there's no cream anywhere else on the on the miniature. I could make some areas of cream if I wanted to, uh, the wristband or the bit around the gun, but this is a time saving technique, so uh, you can do that if you want, but for the sake of getting these hordes of boys done, I'm going to leave that. Uh, then the next colour is the bestial brown. Uh, doing it all brown here, leaving it brown is going to save you time, but I want to put two tones in there just to make it look like it's been had time taken on it. So this brown I use for any belts, buckles and braces. Uh, so he has a belt that runs all the way down here, run it around, and then the belt buckle drops down. Just follow it all the way around, trying to be neat. And then he has uh, a strap also that runs all the way around the waist. Just adds a second tone, second shade, and then uh, means that you haven't completely not bothered with the brown. You've got two shades of brown. That makes all the difference. Running over all the buckle here, I'm not worried about going over the bit that's be silver later. I'll pick that out at the end. Uh, so that's that picked out. That'll do, it looks good. Right, next colour is the black. And for this, I just put black on the boots. So all the way around, up to just below the knee where the start of that uh, cloth begins. And then neatly around the front, avoiding that silver uh, bracket or brace that I've got at the front of the shoe, sort of toe cap 
is in silver, but then just run the brush all the way around the rest of the boot. And you'll see why then uh, it hasn't mattered that this these feet were grey uh, when I sprayed the miniature because I was going to go over them in the black anyway. So it hasn't made it hasn't made any difference. Um, I like making the feet black here. You don't have to, but it just darkens the miniature down, uh, which is what you want. It pushes the legs more into obscurity and the, the focus of the eye will now be on the head, shoulder pads and the weapons which is what you want and you want a sort of a dark backdrop for the rest of the miniature. So that's just the black done there. I uh, remember at the, I said that at the back this disc I'm going to do black so just fill that in in black and then that black star on the disc and then around the edge is the silver. Um, I'm going to do that red at the top there uh, I can do this panel in black, no harm. So I just fill that in. The black looks good. And I'm going to do it on the other side of the gun as well, just to match it. And there's a sculpted orc face there, but I'll pick that out again later on. Then I just chest. Um, I think maybe I'll do this panel here black. I'm just going to run the brush along. Cover that over the top. Right, let's all boys really coming along. Uh, red. You watch how key this colour is. It's a lovely uh, key colour to introduce to this all. Nice aggressive colour. So this part of the shoulder pad uh, I'm going to do in the red. Now if you're painting over the silver or the brown, both of those are nice base colours uh, for you just to go straight on with the red here. Just trying to be generally neat. That looks good. And I think I'm going to make this panel red as well. So, because it's ramshackle, look, I've, I've missed bits of the, uh, the the red here. There's still some bits of the silver showing through, but it doesn't matter because it's meant to be chipped and rusty anyway. So, those bits in red, and I'm happy with that. Right, I've now got the Wazdaka red, and it is significantly a, a different colour to the blood red and I've dropped down to a detail brush now and what I want to do is it always makes the mouth have a bit more impact and that is to neatly pick out the, the gum line on the teeth you can see it there I just pick out the top gun line, gum line that shows there and then I pick out the inside of the mouth and the tongue and again that red, red contrasts really well with green um, so that red in the mouth will really make that face stick out on that orc looking really good, I love the orcs uh, when they're sculpted having the, the mouth wide open um, so you've got, that's why I chose red for this colour scheme it's just the the contrast of it with the green and then the browns and it all links it in so that old boy is looking good classic sort of orc look to it and then the black knocks the figure down because you want them to look quite menacing don't uh, bright pastel looking orcs you want strong deep colours um, so and when you're painting random parts of the armour and you jumble that up with a whole load of other orcs then uh, you get that sort of horde chaotic kind of look which is what you want so that's all the colours done uh, on this orc boy, it's pretty fast going. Uh, so you can imagine yourself painting a batch of 10, a batch of 20 at a time, um, cracking all those colours out and then ready to move on to the shading. But what has speeded it up for you is the base colours here. I haven't had to battle with any of these base colours, I haven't had to build up the layers. It's just straight on with your colours and then look, pretty much 50%, half of the miniature is already in the correct colour for you. It's a nice colour um, and it's a good texture with this uh, Army Painter spray. You'll be able to put the washes straight over the top and they'll go on just fine. So that's the base colours done on this Hawk Boy and then we're going to move on to the washes now. Uh, that's the next stage. Right, so the second stage is washes. I'm going to break that down into different parts. 
Um, so the first colour I've got here is the Aphonian Camo Shade. Now it's like a browny green colour and I found it's... I've experimented doing different ways, uh, different techniques for doing the Orc Flesh and I found that the technique I'm going to show you now uh, is about the best. Um, but as I said before, there's all different shades of Orc Skin, there's different ways you can do it. You can do more pastel colour, you can do more yellows, you can do it a lot darker. Uh, it's entirely up to you, but um, this colour scheme that I'm doing here, I'm quite happy with. So take a base coat brush will do, um, and I'm just going to shade the orc flesh. Nothing else at this stage. So I'm going to run the wash up to the edges of the brown cloth, up to the edge of the wristband here. So not thin, but not flooding it. If you can see on that arm, it's flown into the cracks nicely, um, but not completely flooded out. Quite happy with that, and then around the, f the uh, fist there, and then you can see it just f flowing in to the miniature. Make sure you fill in the cracks or the gaps in between the fingers, and then where it joins on with the weapon. I'm just going to do the other arm here, just filling in. It is green, uh, but it's got that brown tinge to it, so it's not going to. I found that with the green wash, pure green wash, it turned the goblin green into a different shade of green. And that's not what I was after doing. So this brownie green has had a better overall effect. And I'm just running that right into the neck cavity area there. And then now onto the orc face. Important part here is to make sure those eyes I shade it in and then just around the jawline and that orc is looking pretty good just manipulating the wash here make sure it's all flowing in and you can see how it's picked out the detail on the orc face there so that's that done we're going to have to leave it to dry now right so the next stage of the wash is the seraphim serpia you can see on the orc skin there that's dried nice, so it's filled in all the gaps. And it's given it predominantly green shade, uh, but it's got that brown tinge to it. It hasn't changed the green to a, a stronger shade of green. It's, it's browned it out, which is the colour that you want. Uh, a pure brown perhaps wouldn't do that as much. You'd see brown in the cracks, but you, you don't quite want that. You want sort of a green. So that Aphonian camo shade's done a lovely job there. So once that's dry, uh, I take the Seraphim Serpia and this is simply applied to the whole of the miniature apart from uh, the skin. So all the way around, all the buckles, all the metal work, the, the feet, uh, the metal brackets at the front, all of the cloth. Very, very straightforward this just running the wash all the way around the miniature all over the disc and then just being careful around his uh, wristband there gets a coat and then the gun because you want this these orcs to look like their weapons are sort of rusty ramshackle kind of look to it um, so this shade helps it also helps to unify the whole colour uh, or the whole miniature it unifies it together, it does a good job of doing that. So this is going on nicely. Just up underneath the shoulder pad there, just running along on top. In his mouth, I'm going to fill the mouth in with the shade as well, and that will fill it in between the teeth and onto the tongue, like that. And then this wristband going all the way around. It shades that brown spray. Perfectly fills in all the gaps. Looks really good. And to be honest, you could leave it at this stage, and uh, you could get away with using this in a game, and uh, that hasn't taken you very long at all. If you are on a very, uh, you know, if you really want to do just a basic color scheme, then you could stop at this stage after this shade's dry, and uh, you'd be ready. Uh, to get on and use these orcs in games. Um, or if you're cheeky, you could paint them to this stage 
leave them, start playing in your games and then come back to them and finish them off later on. Um, but uh, that's not a policy that I go by but you might want to do it that way. So that shade's gone on, you can see it started to shade and rust out all of the the axe head here as well which is good um, and I've just run over the whole of the miniature. Nice and quick. Um, just use a wash brush for that, covered that area and then just avoided filling in uh, the old flesh. So we'll let that stage dry and then we'll go on to the next part of this uh, of the washes. Right, this is the last stage of the washes. Uh, you're just taking now the Agrax Earth Shade and I'm using a base coat brush just for a little bit more control on the miniature um, as I paint it. And I'll go over all of the metal so that the gun gets a coat of this shade. And again, just letting it flow on, not completely flooding it, but giving it a, a good amount, making sure I fill in the hole there that I've made. I've drilled that out just on the barrel of the gun there. It always looks better when you do that. Um, avoiding the skin. And then when you come to the cloth here, I'll just shade in the areas that join something else. So around the, the uh, belts and braces, the join here where all the uh, stitching is, just the crack in the legs, but sort of the main surfaces I'm not going to uh, shade those in there, they're already done. You'll be quite neat, just going to run around this disc here, that just sets it in nicely on the miniature, and then uh, just on top there, we flooded in a little bit too much. That's it, just around the neck, hold the shoulder pad. Gets a coat, and then the boots. I'm just doing mainly the front, but when you go over the metal here, you'll see that adding that Agrax Earth shade just strengthens that shading. Makes it look really nice. Just running in all around the belt there, chest. That looks good. Avoiding the skin, but I want to get the mouth and teeth. All around there, that makes it strengthens that shading. Just around the wristband there, just the metal on the end of the axe, and then the axe itself. When the Agrax Earth Shade goes on, it strengthens that Seraphim Serpia that's already on there. Uh, it makes it look a lot better, brings that rust out. Looks really good. Make sure it's even. If you've got like a, if you've got a blotch like that on there, then you've got to make sure you get rid of that. Just keeping it even. Um, so that is about it. I'm happy with that. Looks good. So that's the shading done. We'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the third and final stage, which is the final highlights on this orc boy. Right, so we've uh, done the washes, and uh, they come up pretty nice. All the uh, flesh is shaded here nicely uh, with that Avonian camo shade, and then the uh, two shades there, the Seraphim Serpia over the rest of the figure, and then just darkened uh, with the Agrax Surf shade, and it's picked out all the detail for you. All the rusting is done, and uh, all the teeth, everything's filled in nicely for you, so all that work's been done. Very straightforward. So it's up to you now. <coughs> we're on the final stage, and that's uh, highlights. It's up to you what colours you do next. Uh, I think we're going to tackle the skin here. I'm going to show you how to get a final finish on that. So I take goblin green, which is the original base colour, and then I uh, put it on a just putting it on a palette here, and then I take a drop of white. Not very much, you only try and knock this up just a slight shade lighter. If you go too high then the, the highlight becomes too extreme. And then I also add a little bit of flash gets yellow. Uh, it's up to you how you uh, what colour scheme you or what colour style you do for orcs. People have different styles. I add a little bit of yellow here uh, because that goblin green is quite a stark colour, quite pastel. And I want it to uh, come alive a little bit, and that little drop of yellow makes a difference. So I've mixed that up. Now uh, see if I can move it out so you can see it. It's that kind of colour. If I take a drop of the original, 
see the there's the original there and then it's just only a tad lighter might add a tiny bit of white to that only a little drop of yellow it's not much because the more extreme a highlight you do uh, the more noticeable it will be if you miss uh, if you don't get it exactly right I'm actually working with a standard brush here just for the main parts of the flesh um, and then you can see now that I'm just just being neat as best I can using a larger brush here um, it stops me from being too fussy if I had a very fine detail brush then I'd stop and make sure everything was perfect and it would take up lots of time so I'm keeping the brush nice and uh, wet here or a good not too dry when you're doing this highlight and it's easier when the paint's got a nice flow to it so just going over the top of the muscles it's all the sculpting is very strong on these orcs so it's obvious where you could put your highlight just running under the arm there on the other side and just there looks good and just on the and just run the brush over the top looks good and then run it over the fingers not doing the fingernails here I'll pick those out a bit later run it out across the top there see the depth of the sculpting helps means there's not too much effort required just run the brush over the top just connecting it all together if you want to be neat at this stage which really you're just finishing off but that's an arm done and you can see the, the highlight it's come out quite nice on that that's about as light as I go I wouldn't go lighter than that in fact I'll drop in a bit more of the original colour really only adding a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of yellow just to knock it up a, a small shade wouldn't go any more lighter than that so I'm just running over the skin there just a bit under the shoulder pad and then we'll do this other hand you can still get neat results with a standard brush um, if I went, this would take me twice as long if I used um, a detail brush, for example, because there's more brush strokes required and uh, it forces you to be neater when you're using a smaller brush like that. So I'm just using a larger brush because I want to get through these walk boys pretty quick. I've got a lot of them to paint here. So that's the two arms done. Looking good. Then for the face, for the face it's up to you, you can switch to a detail brush. I reckon I can be neat enough here with this standard brush to not need it. It's not easy but I think I can get away with it. Again the sculpting is strong enough for you to be able to run the brush out. I would advise you if you're not too experienced in painting, just to switch to the detail brush for this part, just to get it nice and neat, just to have a nice tip on the brush for that part there, I think I've got away with it there and just running around the ear and around the top of the head and then just on the back of the neck there That's it. It's just the highlight and the flesh. Looks very really nice. Now what I then do, okay, you obviously usually be painting in batches. So you do all that colour on a whole load of them and then you go to a final extreme highlight. And for this one I will switch to the detail brush. So I'll take a detail brush, I'll take uh, some white and some yellow. 
and I push that highlight colour up a level in intensity, again keeping it nice and wet. And you just have to gauge it, I think that's bright enough. And what I want to pick out here is really just the face and I would pick out the just under the eyes there, the nose, the eyebrows, the edge of the mouth. Because the eye, the eye is drawn to the face of a miniature. So I'm just wanting to pick that out and make it a bit stronger. Just a bit on the chin, around the tips of the ear, around the mouth there. Get the other ear. Quite happy with that. As you can see, there I picked out uh, the detail of the face. And then uh, you can do other parts of the miniature if you want. I'm just going to pick out the knuckles on the hands uh, just wherever the fingers wrap around just run the brush over the top and it just picks those out see that on the axe there it just picks out that detail but that's about it, happy with that skin, it's quite nice it's not a stark white colour because you've added a little bit of yellow that keeps it uh, on more warm sort of organic alive kind of tone uh, that's the skin, it's probably the more time consuming part of the miniature um, but you're about halfway there now because you've got all your browns are done not going to touch this um, cloth here and then you've got your skin done as well so uh, you're well and truly into getting that miniature finished alright so again working with the detail brush we're going to get the face finished here first thing I do is take some of the Wazdaka Red and I'm just going to spot in the eyes. One, two. If you look at the box um, for the orcs, the eyes aren't too bright. I don't want them bright for the orcs. So just plain Wesdaka red and no highlight, and that's the eyes finished there. And then for the tongue, take some Wesdaka red and we brighten it up. Add some white to it, not too much. I'm just going to pick out the tongue there. So you can see that's, I can see that's been picked out nicely, so that looks good. Right, the next thing to pick out is the teeth. Take some of the old uh, bleached bone onto the palette and I'll take some white, mix it together about 50 50, perhaps a little bit more white. And I'm just going to pick out the teeth here. Good. It's already been shaded for you, so you're just doing a final highlight with this white mix. A little bit of water, just keeping the paint nicely flowing. You could do multiple layers of you know different browns and shades building it up, but. I think you can get just as good results here just by mixing white and bleach bone, that looks fine. So you can see now the uh, the mouth picked out, his teeth and the tongue all done. That face looks really good, it really stands out. Um, that's what you want the eye drawn to, of the hawk's face and his snarling teeth. It looks really good. So that's all the skin and the mouth and so on finished. Right, so we're just looking to pick out the uh, belts and 
buckles down. So using the old best your brown the same base colour. Not adding to it at all, just the plain colour as it is, and then just using a standard brush here, just repainting uh, the belts and buckles, and it just lifts it a shade, makes it stand out. Uh, just avoiding filling in any of the shading. So it's about it, just on top of the shoulders here. Two straps that come down, and you'll see that the shading is uh, the washes have not tipped down a few tones. So when you're redoing this colour, it just brightens it and brings it back to life again. You do want it at a distinct brown compared to the the colour of the cloth. So that uh, repainting that just helps achieve that. And that's about it. Not too not too fussy there. This miniature is almost there. You've now finished all your cloth, belts, buckles done, skin is done, face is done. So all that's left to do is a bit of red and the uh, silver chipping and details. Uh, and then this old boy is done. So it's a nice quick colour scheme, which is what you want when you're painting hordes and hordes of orcs. Uh, what we'll do is red now. What I'll we'll do is I'll switch to the old blood red paint. And again, not adding any uh, other colours to it, just blood red as it is. Uh, just using a detail brush here, you can use standard if you want. And wherever that red armour is, uh, without going into the shading, I just um, blotch on some red paint. And that just brings out uh, the strength of that colour again. One coat should do it quite sort of thick. And I just blotch it on. And you can see how it's lifted that armour. You want this red armour to stand out. And then on his uh, chest there, just without filling in any gaps, I've just blotched a little bit in there to strengthen uh, the red in the armour. And that's the red done. And when you combine that with the chipping, the metallic chipping, then that armour will look very nice. So the reds are all done. Uh, we're happy with the black as it is, not going to re go over that. So the last colour I think we're on the last colour now, is just the silver. There's a fair bit of work to do. So go back to the, this is the new colour I'm using here, Iron Breaker, which is the old chain mail. And a nice flowing colour, so I've mixed a little bit of water with this, so it's quite, it's got a nice flow to it. And then using a detail brush for this one, I'm going to carefully pick out the detail. So, see the X there? You watch how I paint this. I'm going to try and leave the rust in place, but just sharpen up the axe. I'm going to run the brush along the edge to pick out the edges. And then I run it along the edge to the line of the axe here. Down. Just the line of the, uh, all the edges there. The bolts, just pick them out a little bit. And then the, the blade of the axe, the end of the axe, just picked out as well. And then I just run the brush down the axe and put in some of those strokes, directional strokes. Not over the whole thing, but just over a part of it. And that gives you that sharpened sort of look, but still keeping that rusty sort of feel to it. So again on the other side, just run using the edge of the brush to run along the edge. Pick out the bolts. And detail. And then just the, the edge of the axe there as well. That looks good. And down the bottom of the axe, just re-picking out the tips and the bolts and the edges there. Not too much, just enough. Any extreme areas. Uh, he's got a ring here on the side of his head. So we're going to pick that out. Front and side. Then on the chest here, there's a, a buckle I'm going to pick out. It's all in brown at the moment because it hasn't been touched previously, so that's a nice background colour for you to pick out the detail. 
Uh, and then there's an, a, uh, an armoured plate here. I'm just going to pick out the little bolts. The edge of this arm, I'm going to run around the edge of this armour plate. Like so. And then maybe just a couple of spots of scratches on it. And there's a little black one here. Uh, I'm just going to pick out a couple of little bolts. And then pick out a bit of the edge. And then the red armour, I'm going to pick out the red spikes. And then I'm not going to run the whole edge for this one. I'm just going to chip the edges a little bit. Put a little bit, a few silver scuffs. So now you can see the armour. I picked out some of the edge, the tips of things, and then a few scuff marks with the silver. And uh, that's made that look really good. And then you've got the belt buckle here. I'm just going to run a little bit of silver over that. Easy. Easily done. And the shoulder here. Pick out the tips of the spikes on his shoulder. Run the brush along the edge. Run the brush along the edge here as well. And that looks fine. And then, so for silver, uh, you're looking to run uh, the brush all the way along the whole edge. When you come to a colour, like the red or the black, you just want to create a chipped effect, so I'm just going to add some silver to some of the edges, but not all of them. And then to create a scuff, you can just do two dashes of a brush. And that adds like a, a scratch mark. And then you've got the, the heraldry bit here, I'm just running over the whole edge of that to make that stand out. And there you go, there's a shoulder. Uh, all shaded in nicely, and then a few scratch marks. I'm going to add a couple of little spots of the silver, that looks better. You can see the effect on the armour there. Same again for the, uh, the little gun he's got here. Uh, I'll just paint the full edge when I'm on the silver. And then leave the main, the main part of the Got a nice rusty sort of colour. End of the gun here. Looks good. And just on the inside of the gun. There's a black panel I've done here, so I'm just going to chip part of it. Like that. And back over here, there's a black panel. I'm just going to pick out the little studs and then chip just part of the edges, not all of them. Like so. Looks good. And then uh, pick out a little bit on the, uh, the steel toe caps on the feet. And just spinning the miniature around, there's a buckle here on the back. It's already sitting there in brown, it's a nice but it's colour to start off with for the silver. And then just pick it out, like that. Oh, and we've got this panel of black here, so I pick out the little studs here. And then I run uh, the brush around, partly catching the edges. And then, watch, I'm going to put a scuff mark across his back here. Just two strokes, and that creates that kind of like a, a long sort of scratch, which all helps to add to the effect. And then just a few spots of ch sort of chipping, and that creates the effect that that's a metallic panel, um, a, a block of metal that's protecting. And there's a little buckle right on the inside here. Let's see if I can get a hold of that as well. Yeah, that's picked out fine. All right, so there's your orc boy. That's all the uh, the different colours done. You can see all the armour's been picked out, all the little chips and things have been put on that, so that gives it um, that kind of rusty armour sort of uh, effect for the orcs, which is what you're looking for, sort of ramshackle style. And you can see it on the, the panel there. So the way these panels have been done on this orc boy is how you'll do the vehicles. Um, that base colour, and then you're just chipping all the edges up. And that's exactly the same 
Um, and then again, this rusty kind of effect of the metal there is exactly how I'd do it uh, on the orc vehicles as well. So this colour scheme you apply to any uh, orc unit that you want. Skins come out quite nice. Uh, the shading on that and then just that stronger highlight around the face just to uh, pick it out and make it stronger uh, but that's it, all that's left to do uh, is just a little bit of uh, of the base I'm just going to base the orc here uh, just putting the flock on, it's just an old brush it's going to blotch on some PVA just in patches on here as much or as little as you want depending on what scheme you're doing your basing and then just put the orc in the top here, get the uh, flock on there, bash off the excess, and then blow the spare stuff away. And then uh, that's the orc basing done. Right, so that's the orc boy finished. Uh, the basing's done there. All that's left for me to do is just to give him a light coat of the Games Workshop Purity Seal just to uh, hold the whole thing together and uh, protect the miniature but I think that's a uh, very straightforward way of painting Snorks, it's nice and effective um, and it's that brown spray paint at the beginning that has saved me uh, doing all that extra highlighting and work. Nice colour for all of these base colours, the red, the browns, the green, the black, that brown colour is perfect starting point. So that's how to paint Orcs uh, and I've tried to show you a technique here that's fast yet effective, I think that's a nice looking outcome there and yet um, something that's manageable. If you're painting large amounts of miniatures, uh, I think this one is a um, a good way to go about it. Show you a couple of the other orc boys that I've got in progress here. There's another one, and you can see I've done that uh, sort of checkered effect on the armor there. Uh, just to briefly tell you how that works, uh, the base color I do is white. Um, I do once all the shading is done, it's solid white to fill in the whole thing, and then I take uh, black paint water it down and then I just paint a grid onto the white. So paint the grid and then I get solid black after that and then just fill in uh, the squares alternately. And once that's done I then uh, add a bit of dirt and shade with the Seraphim Serpia just to dirty down the white and then I apply my chipping on top of that and that's how you get that checkered effect which I think looks really effective um, for Orcs. So that just gives you an idea um, of how that's put together and again you see the effect of the shading on the face uh, miniatures looking really nice. You can imagine hordes and hordes of these um, I think it's worth painting nicely um, so you can apply that method as I said to all the orcs any of those units and also to the vehicles as well. So that's the painting tutorial for orcs uh, check out my channel for other painting tutorials as well. I've got Dark Elder, Blood Angels, Necrons Elder, they're already uploaded and you can follow step by step how to paint them and then uh, check out the battle reports as well and uh, keep an eye out for Orc battle reports in the future. So thanks for watching this video and tune in next time. Mm -hmm.